This conference will now be recorded. Yes, this is the day to day applications of optical fibers. Here, these are the data cables. So probably you have seen in LAN connections in your CPDS lab or any, in, in any other labs or in a, any other uh, telecommunication devices or in even your uh, table cable. Cable TV, cable TV, uh, data cable. So these are the data cables. These data cables are nothing but optical fibers. So this is the another look of the optical fiber. This is the another look of the optical fibers. So generally, these type of optical fibers you can see in transmission of data. Okay. So in our lab, uh, you may have seen this type of optical fiber. Probably you did. One experiment called as bending losses. In bending losses experiment, we have an optical fiber. This is the one meter optical fiber. Okay, this is the one end of the optical fiber. This is the other end of the optical fiber, and this is the figure of the this is the diagram of the optical fiber. So basically, what it consists of. Yeah. Before that, I am going to explain what is the definition of optical fiber. Optical fiber is a cylinder of transparent dielectric medium to carry the optical signal without any appreciable loss. This is the definition of optical fiber. Once again, I'm telling you optical fiber is a cylinder of a transparent dielectric medium. So what is the what is meaning that? Way? So you have seen that these are the optical fibers. So this is a optical fiber. So what is the shape of this optical fiber or this is an this, this is an optical fiber. Okay. What is the shape of an optical fiber here? It is cylindrical in shape. Okay. That is the meaning of the first one. Optical fiber is a, is a cylinder of transparent dielectric medium. What is the dielectric? Dielectrics are nothing but what insulators. So here, if you clearly observe the core medium, this is the core medium and this is the cladding medium. These are the very, very important parts of optical fiber they are made up of with the glass glass is nothing but what medium dielectric medium that's why that the, in the definition that is used medium to carry the optical signal what it carries it carries optical signal uh, uh, without any appreciable loss there is no loss by taking one end to the another end simply what it says that simply what it says that it is a cylindrical in shape and it internally consists of a dielectric medium and it passes light rays it propagates light rays from one end to the optical signals from one end to the another end suppose if you inject the light rays here it carries the light rays in this way in this way and it emits the light rays or it uh, <coughs> ejects the light rays here so by some process this is the optical fiber simply you take a water tube water tube uh, let us make a comparison between this and optical fiber uh, what is that optical fiber and a water tube so what it tube what it will do if you connect one end of the water tube to the pipe what it will do it carries it to close or it allows the flow of water from one end to the another end simply it will do the same thing okay yeah, internally the process is different. What, what is the principle inside the optical fiber is different, but I'm just making an analogy. So light signal, if you inject here by the process, by some process, the light ray will propagate like this and it reaches the second end. This is the optical fiber. This is the basic definition of the optical fiber. So optical fiber is a cylinder of a transparent dielectric medium to carry the optical signal without any appreciable loss so we suppose if one end of the uh, water tube if you power one liter you have to get the same one liter at the output which means uh, just it is analogy suppose let us assume it is a water tube in this water tube if you power one liter of water here at the output you have to get the same one liter so you should not get uh, uh, less than that value so that is no loss similarly what is the amount of power here you are giving the same output power you have to get here otherwise there is some loss inside the optical fiber so there is no appreciable loss 
optical fiber does not consist of the appreciable loss small small losses should be there but uh, uh, ideal ideal optical fiber does not consume any power but in practicality uh, there is some loss of power that we will do, that we will discuss later what are the different optical losses inside the optical fiber So what next? Next topic is what is the principle behind the working of optical fiber? What is the principle behind the working of opt optical fiber? Optical fiber is optical fiber works on the principle of total internal reflection. What already you know in class twelve. So before that, let me explain the structure of optical fiber. It consists of a core, three important parts. It consists of what are the three important parts? Core, cladding, protective jacket. So here, elaborately I will show. So this is overall optical fiber. Inside it, what it consists of? It consists of three important parts. This is core, very very important part. Core is a tensile medium, and the core is surrounded by the Another denser medium called as a cladding. So this is also made up of two glass. This is core and this is the cladding. This is the core and this is the cladding. Uh, this is making disturbance. very good so this is the uh, what are the import what uh, so let me where i am I'm explaining the structure of optical fiber i am explaining the structure of optical fiber basically it consists of three important parts what are the three important parts core cladding protective jacket so these are the three important parts of an optical fiber if you clearly see here this is a core this is cladding and this is the outer jacket and these are the two additional parts right Right, right, right. Right. So it consists of core, which is an important, uh, which is the denser medium. This is the cladding, which is the rarer medium, and this is the outer jacket. So these are the three important parts of an optical fiber. Of course, core is made up of with a dielectric or glass medium, and the cladding is also made up of with a, a uh, glass medium. 
of course the refractive index of this core and the cladding varies to each other the core is a denser medium and the cladding is the rarer medium you know in intermediate what is rarer medium what is rarer medium and what is a denser medium so core is a den denser medium denser medium means what whose refractive index is very very high and the cladding refra refractive index is low so what does the meaning of low refractive index or it's a rarer medium means what so cladding have less refractive index and core have more refractive index that's why it is called as denser medium and that's why it is called as a rarer medium you should know uh, about clearly about these two which one and which one core and cladding so core is a denser medium and the cladding is a rarer medium of course both are made up of with which type of materials glass materials okay yes sir even though both are made up of with glass how one material refractive index is denser and how another material is rarer yes core is doped with certain amount of impurities to enhance its refractive index to improve the to increase its refractive index core is doped with some impurities so its uh, refractive index increases and it becomes denser medium compared to cladding so both are generally glass mediums only okay right so what is the principle behind that so this is the basic part so this is the core this is the cladding and this is the protective jacket this is about the structure of an optical fiber sir what is the principle behind the working of optical fiber total internal reflection total internal reflection is the principle behind the working of optical fiber you know in intermediate you have seen you learn the total internal reflection once again recalling the same concept let us take two mediums so this medium is here this is n1 is a denser medium whose refractive index is n1 so here i taken two mediums so the below medium is a denser medium and the above medium is a rarer medium this is the rarer medium and this is the denser denser means whose refractive index is more that is called as denser medium this is a rarer medium whose refractive index is less okay for example you take the glass and the air so let us assume the below medium is a glass medium whose refractive index is n1 and the above medium is air medium this is a, a rarer medium whose refractive index is less this is n2 so then what is this line horizontal line and what is this vertical line this horizontal line is a boundary between denser medium and rarer medium this line separates first medium from the second medium so this is the first medium and this is the second medium so this line separating first medium from the second medium so this is boundary line okay then what is this vertical line what is this vertical line this vertical line is called as imaginary mathematical line which is called as normal this vertical imaginary line is called as normal so it's, it's a simple as it's assumption or it's a normal it's a simple vertical line which is drawn perpendicular to the boundary right now i am incidenting a light ray here i am incidenting a light ray in denser medium so with an angle of incidence theta so theta is the angle of incidence right so here this is the incident light ray this incident light ray is incident in denser medium with an angle of incidence theta what is angle of incidence so it is the angle between incident light ray and normal 
so here the angle the angle made by this incident light ray to the normal is what the theta so theta is what the angle of incidence it is very 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 less so here if you incident a light ray with an angle of incidence theta then what happens this light ray undergo refraction this light ray enters from denser medium to rarer medium so this this light ray undergo refraction this happens when the angle of incidence of the incident light ray is very very less what is the next case i am continue to increasing the angle of incidence so here theta is angle of incidence when compared to this case in the second case i increases the angle of incidence so here the angle of incidence is increases okay from this angle to this angle now what happens the angle of refraction also increases here you see if, if this is the angle of incidence this is the angle of refraction if i continue to increases the angle of incidence then what happens the angle of refraction also increases so as i continue to increases so if this is the angle of incident now if i increases this angle of incidence to here if i launch a light ray like this okay now the angle of refraction also increases at a particular situation what happens you know at a particular angle of incidence theta the angle of refraction increases 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 and the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees here you see here the angle between this angle here the angle between which one and which one uh, normal or uh, uh, here the angle between this boundary line and this normal is 90 degrees you clearly see you clearly see the angle between these two is 90 degrees so here at a particular angle of incidence the angle of refraction becomes 90 degrees and the light ray undergo refraction along the boundary line this particular angle of incidence theta is called as what angle critical angle so what is the critical angle critical angle is the angle of incidence in denser medium in such a way that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees this is called as a critical angle now the next case if i launch a light ray in denser medium in such a way that uh, it's making an angle of incidence more than critical angle so, which means that this is the critical angle this is the critical angle so if i make if i incident a light ray in denser medium like this what happens the light ray undergo refraction like this suppose if i launch a light ray with greater angle than the critical angle more than this angle like this here if i launch a light ray like this now what happens this is the third case yes here this is the third light ray here this light ray making an angle of incidence theta greater than critical angle now this light ray either does not undergo refraction into the second medium or does not go refraction at 90 degrees simply it reflects back to the same medium if you launch it once again i'm telling you if you launch a light ray in denser medium okay with an angle of incidence theta so with an angle of incidence theta greater than what angle critical angle the light ray totally reflect back to the same medium this process is called as total internal reflection this process is called as what total internal reflection once again i am telling you this is a denser medium and the above medium is a rarer medium denser medium is one type of medium and rarer medium is another type of medium denser medium uh, have high refractive index and rarer medium have low refractive index so when you launch a light ray in denser medium with an angle of incidence theta greater than what angle critical angle then that light ray totally reflect back to the same medium this process is called as total internal reflection this is called as this is the basic principle of optical fiber okay so here yes now here i am i am taking the limiting case i am taking the limiting case let us assume uh yes we have now what is our task is what is the critical angle for these two mediums 
so this medium is a denser medium with refractive index n1 and the above medium is a uh, second medium whose refractive index is n2 and whose refractive index is less it's a rarer medium it's a denser medium the refractive index is n1 for this denser medium and the refractive index is n2 for rarer medium now we have to find out the critical angle expression so theta less than theta c the light ray go outside theta is equal to theta c the light ray undergo refraction for 90 degrees of angle of refraction if theta greater than theta c the light ray totally reflect back to the same medium which is called as total internal reflection i am taking the limiting case what is the limiting case this case if the angle of incidence theta here my light ray is incidented in denser medium whose refractive index is n1 okay and incidented into what medium second medium rarer medium of refractive index n2 so if i launch this light ray in such a way that theta angle of incidence which means the angle between incident light ray and normal is called as angle of incidence and if it is this theta if this theta equals to critical angle now this light ray undergo refraction along the boundary line between uh, denser medium and uh, rarer medium so our angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees this particular angle of incidence is called as critical angle so you take this condition here by using snell's law uh, here i am taking what law snell's law so what is snell's law n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 what is n1 n1 is the refractive index of the first medium n2 is the refractive index of the second medium theta 1 is the angle of incidence in the first medium theta 2 is the angle of incidence in the rarer medium theta 1 is the angle of incidence in the denser medium so already you have seen this uh, uh, law in uh, intermediate okay so was tells law okay sin mu 1 by sin, sin i by sin r is equal to uh, mu 1 by mu 2 that already you studied in intermediate so the same formula is applied here n1 sin theta 2 is equal to n2 sin 2 n2 sin theta 2 this is called as uh, snell's law here theta 1 is equal to theta c theta angle of incidence is equal to critical angle theta 2 is equal to what 90 degrees that's why i, I said that limited case so here you see here angle of incidence theta which is theta 1 theta 1 is equal to what theta c next angle of refraction what is angle of refraction the angle of refraction is the angle between the normal and refracted light so here this is the refracted light this refracted light making 90 degrees with what normal okay so here theta 2 angle of refraction theta 1 is angle of incidence which is equals to critical angle theta 2 is angle of refraction which is equals to 90 degrees the same values i substituted here you see so n1 n1 sine sine theta 1 theta 1 is equal to what angle of incidence which is equals to critical angle n2 n2 sine theta 2 theta 2 means the re angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees sine 90 is equal to 1 so that's why it becomes n2 from this sine theta c is equal to what n2 by n1 n1 sine theta c is equal to n2 from this sine theta c is equal to what n2 by n1 from this theta c is equal to what sine inverse of n2 by n1 this is the expression for critical angle please remember this formula we are going to derive this formula we are going to use this formula in the case of acceptance angle sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 or dimichi so from we can conclude that theta c is equal to sin inverse of n2 by n1 okay so this is the expression for critical angle so here i will demonstrate some basic videos regarding to the uh, total internal reflection okay it's a way uh, very very easy to understand the concept of total internal reflection here you see these are the optical fibers here you may see these type of optical fibers in so many household decorating the uh, items okay yes you see this is uh, a glass okay this is a denser medium and the outside is what air medium this is the rarer medium here total internal reflection will be takes place this is a laser 
this laser is uh, focused inside the glass medium denser medium now here you see here what happens you see so this light ray undergo refraction here if the angle of incidence here is greater than critical angle here the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle then light ray totally reflected back to the same medium once again here if the angle of incidence at this case angle of incidence is greater than critical angle this light ray undergo total reflection here once again this is denser medium this is out this is the denser medium this is the rarer medium here if this light ray go like this here if angle of incidence at this point is greater than critical angle then what happens the light ray totally reflected back to the same medium this is the total integral reflection this is a live example of a propagation of light inside the optical fiber once again you see here you see so a laser light here you see yes this is another demonstration of total internal reflection so here the light is propagating from one end to the other end by the process of total internal reflection this is another type of optical fiber here you see one end of the optical fiber is illuminated with led and we are getting light at the another end so by the process of total internal reflection so these are some demonstrations so you see this is also optical fibers uh, this generally you see them as household applications yes this is Yes, these are the parts of optical fiber already I explained you. This part is core, which is made up of the glass. The surrounded part is called as cladding, and this is called as buffer jacket. Core is a denser medium, cladding is a rarer medium, which are generally made up of the glass, and uh, this is a coating or buffer jacket. You see very clearly light ray so this is core medium this is a denser medium or core medium this is cladding medium both upside under downside this upside and this downside both are water cladding medium this is what medium denser medium here the in order to happen to total internal reflection i already told you light should launch in what medium denser medium so here in optic uh, in optical fiber light is launched in what medium denser medium here you see here the light ray launched into what medium denser medium yes at this point you see at the point b at the point b if the angle of incidence is greater than what angle yes somebody making noise right here at point b if the angle of incidence is greater than what angle critical angle the light ray totally reflected back to the same medium otherwise it will go from which denser medium to rarer medium which means at point b if the angle of incidence is less than critical angle the light ray could have go from denser medium to what medium rarer medium you see yes this is a normal this is what this vertical line is called as imaginary normal if this is the angle of incidence so the red line is incident light ray 
and this blue line is normal and the angle of incidence between this uh, red line and this blue line is angle of incidence if this angle of incidence theta is greater than critical angle the light ray totally reflect back to the same medium you see angle of incidence is greater than uh, cladding a uh, core cladding interface the light ray totally reflect back to the same medium so it go from point b to point c point c to point d point e to point f point f to point g like that uh, it will go from one end to the another end of the optical fiber you see, you see. at each point uh, where it touches uh, at this is point b here the angle of incidence is, should be greater than critical angle this is point c here the angle of incidence should be greater than what angle critical angle so at every point it should satisfies the same condition which condition the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle so here angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle then only it undergoes successive total internal reflection and the light ray will go from one end to the other end of the optical fiber so this is the in this way in this way the light ray will go from one end to the other end okay so this is the principle and working of optical fiber yes now the very important concept so so far what so far what we have seen is so what is the definition of optical fiber what is the structure of optical fiber what is the structure of optical fiber and later what we have seen uh, what is the principle behind the working of optical fiber okay so what is the principle of optical fiber total internal reflection is the principle behind the working of optical fiber and we have seen the expression for critical angle okay so far these basics we have seen okay now the very 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 important concepts in this axis in this optical fiber is acceptance angle and acceptance cone probably without this question this particular lesson will not uh, asked by a question by the examiner mostly if optical fiber lesson immediately examiner will go to this particular question generally okay what is this question is uh, define acceptance angle and acceptance cone derive an expression for acceptance angle and numerical aperture this is the general question okay very very uh, important question in point of examination sir will you share this notes what 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 right right so generally uh, what is the acceptance angle and acceptance cone yes when we launch the light beam into an optical fiber at one end all the light rays cannot propagate from one end to the other end which means that uh, let me take let me take right suppose here three light rays are there one is red another one is uh, uh, full or dark light ray another one is dotted light ray here i launched three light rays one is this is a dotted light ray this is a dark light ray and this is a red light ray okay so to distinguish from one to another here i am launching three light rays one a so this is light ray a this is light ray c this is light ray b at a different angle of incidences okay this light ray making more angle of incidence this light ray making moderate angle of incidence this red light ray making the least angle of incidence so here i am launching the light rays a c b into optical fiber core medium at a different angle of incidence okay does this all three light ray can propagate from one end to another end no it is not possible okay only out of these three light rays one 
two, three light rays. Only one light ray will satisfy the condition of total internal reflection. You see here, here this dotted light ray, here this dotted light ray, just going from denser medium to rarer medium because it is failed to produce what what uh, what condition? Here the angle of incidence. Uh, at this particular place and okay? this is core medium this is a cladding medium this is core medium this is cladding medium okay this is a dense this is a denser medium this is a rarer medium okay this is a denser uh, this is core medium the inner part is core medium and the outer part is what medium cladding medium okay so yet this this is the boundary core cladding boundary or denser medium rarer medium boundary at this boundary this dotted light ray is failed to produce the total internal reflection condition which means that here the angle of incidence with this normal this this angle of incidence this angle of incidence is less than critical angle so that this light ray go from denser medium to rarer medium by the process of refraction so total internal reflection does not happen with this light then what about this light this light just produces here as angle of incidence changes correspondingly angle of refraction also changes but this light is produces which condition theta c just it satisfies the angle of incidence theta is equal to theta c then this light ray undergo refraction see even it, it doesn't go total internal reflection just it undergo what process refraction along the boundary line yes this light ray can go from one end to the other end but not by total internal reflection by the process of what refraction then what about this red light ray as the angle of incidence is less then correspondingly more angle of refraction is there okay so uh, due to this angle of refraction what happens it produces the angle of incidence more than a critical angle here so this is the normal and this is the incident light ray and this is the angle of incidence so this angle of incidence is greater than what angle critical angle so that this light ray is undergo total internal reflection so it is very very clear what is very clear all the light rays a c b does not propagate from one end to the another end of the optical fiber by the process of total internal reflection which means there is a condition or there is a limiting angle to incident light ray on into the optical fiber so this is the this angle is called as what angle this limiting angle is called as acceptance angle which means that if you launch the light rays into the optical fiber with your desired value of angle of incidence so this is one angle of incidence this is another angle of incidence this is another angle of incidence okay if you launch the light rays into the optical fiber with your desired values of angle of incidence all those light rays cannot propagate from one end to the another end of the optical fiber by the process of total internal reflection only those light rays which satisfies the condition of total internal reflection can satisfy can propagate from one end to the another end so if they are launched within certain angle that limiting angle is called as what angle acceptance angle that limiting angle within which the light ray undergo total internal reflection takes place is called as what angle acceptance angle of course uh, uh, elaborated definition we will see later okay so now we will go to the derivation so here i am taking two mediums this is uh, rarer medium and this is denser medium you know this is the structure of optical fiber this internal part is called as what core this part is called as what core okay and this part which surrounds the core the outer part is called as what cladding core refractive index is n1 n1 is the refractive index of core and n2 is the refractive index of cladding cladding also having refractive index whose refractive index is n2 okay so this medium outside medium is air medium whose refractive index is n0 air medium refractive index is what n0 here this is the axis this what is this dotted line 
this dotted line is the axis of the optical fiber center point of the optical fiber this is called as axis of the optical fiber this dotted line okay right so what is this oa what is this oa oa is a incident light ray here we are launching the light ray not from denser to rarer rarer to denser you should be very very clear initially we are launching the light ray from air medium to glass medium outside medium is air medium and core is what medium whose refractive index is n1 it is a glass medium so here i am launching the light ray from air medium to denser medium so oa is what incident light ray which strikes the glass at the point a which strikes the glass at what point a okay right here the angle of incidence is alpha i what is alpha i it is the angle between incident light ray oa and the axis axis is nothing but a, a it's a reference point okay so angle between the normal here this is a normal axis axis what normal okay at this point okay and this is the angle of incident and incident light ray so the angle between incident light ray and normal is called as angle of incidence alpha i alpha i is the angle of incidence now this light ray when it strikes a when it strikes point a one moment let me mute all right this light ray o a when it just touches the core medium strikes the core medium it undergo refraction so a b is a refracted light ray a b is a refracted light ray just it touches the this light ray touches the point b what is point b it is the boundary between core this is core and this this is cladding so this is the boundary between the core and cladding when this light ray touches the point b what is point b core cladding boundary or this is also called as core cladding interface okay this core cladding boundary yes here it is making an angle of incidence theta now alpha r is the angle of refraction it is a refracted light ray and whose it is refracted from a to b o a is a incident light ray and a b is a refracted light ray the light ray enter from air medium to denser medium so a b undergo refraction initially okay initially it undergo refraction when we uh, just launch the light ray so alpha r is the angle of refraction at the same time at the point b this light ray becomes incident light ray for this incident light ray theta is angle of incidence what is this theta angle of incidence if this theta is greater than critical angle theta c if theta is greater than critical angle then this light ray totally internal reflex to the same core medium once again it touches point b this is point c here also if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle it go to point d here also if it makes an angle of incidence greater than critical angle it goes to e here also if it makes an angle of incidence greater than critical angle it goes like this in this way light ray propagates from one end to the other end here what i need here what i need is this point let us consider triangle a b c this is in triangle a b c in this triangle this alpha r plus this theta is equal to 90 degrees here i draw a normal and this angle between this uh, normal and this particular um, perpendicular is what 90 degrees here i draw a line and that uh, and the angle between this line and this axis is 90 degrees okay let us consider this triangle a b c in this triangle a b c this alpha r plus this theta is equal to this 90 degrees according to the rules of triangle alpha r plus theta is equal to 90 degrees from this alpha r is equal to 90 minus theta it is obvious from the triangle alpha r is equal to 90 minus theta so from snell's law 
sin alpha sin i by sin r is equal to mu1 by mu2 like that sin alpha i where alpha i is the angle of incidence of the first medium what is alpha i alpha i is angle of incidence alpha i is angle of incidence where alpha r is angle of refraction where alpha r is what angle of refraction so here right taken what is sin alpha i and sin alpha r so sin i sin angle of incidence is sin alpha i divided by sin r sin angle of refraction is alpha is equal to n1 by n0 n1 is the angle of sorry n1 is the refractive index of denser medium and n0 is the refractive index of air medium simply n0 into sin alpha i is equal to n1 into sin alpha r this is snell's law okay mu, uh, mu uh, so this is uh, snell's law what you already know in intermediate once again i am telling you what is alpha i alpha i is the angle of incidence and what is n0 n0 is the refractive index of the air medium what is alpha r angle of refraction what is the n1 n1 is the second medium or denser medium here where, where is alpha i in, in reality here it is alpha i is the angle of incidence in air medium whose refractive index is n0 alpha r is the angle of refraction whose refractive index is what n one so for these two mediums i apply snell's law so if you apply the snell's law it becomes like this sin alpha i by sin alpha r is equal to n1 by n from this what is sin alpha i value sin alpha is equal to n1 by n02 into this sin alpha r brought to here it becomes into sin alpha r n1 by n n0 into sin alpha r we already here you see here you see my cursor alpha r is equal to what you know 90 minus theta so instead of alpha r what i place is 90 minus theta at uh, 90 degrees sine becomes what cos so sine 90 minus theta becomes what cos theta now this is the crucial step of this particular topic you should be very very careful already i introduced the topic this is the crucial step here i am making uh, to to get the derivation for acceptance angle here i am i am taking alpha i is the alpha i as the alpha m max you see here i am going to replace this alpha i angle of incidence alpha i as alpha i max maximum incident angle alpha i i am going to convert it as what maximum angle of incidence and this theta angle of incidence is uh, I am going to take as what theta c. Why you you have taken sir? Right. Already I introduced the concept to you. Let us consider three light rays A, C, B. Here this light ray A making greater angle of incidence. Here it is making an angle of incidence of phi, and consequently it is refracting from rarer medium to denser medium. You see, it is not from denser to rarer. It is from rarer to denser. As angle of incidence is more, angle of refraction is less. You see, this is the reverse condition to the total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? In total internal reflection, as angle of incidence, yeah, light ray should travel from denser to rarer, denser to rarer in case of what total internal reflection. But it is quite opposite. It is not total internal reflection. Here the light ray is going from rarer to denser, not from denser to rarer. Okay. So here the light ray is going from rarer air medium to glass medium. So as the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction decreases. The angle of refraction decreases. You see. That's why this light ray making at poor cladding interface with less angle of incidence. This is the normal and this is the incident light ray. This incident light ray making an angle of incidence less than the critical angle so that this light ray go away from the core and core to cladding and it go away. You see, this is core medium and this is the cladding medium and this light ray go going away. So it does not undergo total internal reflection. Yes, uh, I decreases the angle of incidence from C okay you see and this is what another light ray this is another, the mid one is this dark line is the another light ray 
this light ray is making less angle of incidence as the angle of incidence decreases the angle of refraction increases because the light ray is not going from denser to rarer your reverse process you should understand this point very clearly okay the light ray is not going from denser to rarer like total internal reflection total internal reflection takes inside but outside here what happens is the light ray going from air medium outside air medium refractive index whose refractive index is less okay rarer medium to denser medium glass medium so as angle of incidence increases angle of as angle of incidence decreases so this is more highest angle of incidence this is highest angle of incidence now i decreases angle of incidence from here to here as angle of incidence decreases angle of refraction increases yes this light ray making an angle this is normal and this is the incident light ray at this pore cladding boundary this is making an angle of incidence theta c exactly the angle of incidence theta is equals to what angle critical angle so that the light ray undergo refraction not total internal reflection so that it can travel from one end to another end but by the process of refraction which means this is the limiting condition to at least to travel the light from one end to the another end at least this light ray we are launching uh, should make an angle of incidence is equals to what angle critical angle which angle critical angle so the same i shown here you see in the figure the same i show you see okay this light ray this light ray making an angle of incidence theta if this theta equals to theta c this light ray go like this yes it can travel from one into another end okay this is the minimum condition to uh, travel the light from one end to the another end that's why i, I explained here you see this light ray then what about this red light ray sir red light ray in comfort zone here still the angle of here most angle of incidence is highest i reduced the angle of incidence to this still i reduced the angle of incidence to this okay so the angle of incidence here is alpha uh, so let it be this is the lowest angle of incidence as the angle of incidence increases what happens as angle of incidence here i decreases from this dotted line to this dark line this dark line to this red line this red line is having lowest angle of incidence so that the angle of refraction is very 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 high angle of refraction is high as the angle of refraction is very 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 high this light ray touches this core cladding interface at this point with an angle of incidence greater than critical angle so this light ray actually a refracted light ray but it acts as the incident light ray at this point it acts as the incident light ray at this point so at this point if you draw a normal then the angle of incidence this angle of incidence alpha t is equals to what greater than critical angle so it undergo total internal reflection yes this red light ray undergo from one end to the other end by the process of total internal reflection and this light ray the middle light ray is also traveling from one end to the other end and this dotted light ray cannot travel from one end to the other end of fiber just it is going from denser to rarer four to cladding just you see this dotted line this dotted line uh, does not travel from one end to the other end just it is crossing the uh, core and entering to cladding and go away it doesn't go either under refraction which means refraction also it does not go from one end to the other end so out of these three light rays which is the highest possible angle this one see the light ray c here making an angle of incidence equals to critical angle and still it is propagating from one end to the another end so the highest possible angle here the highest possible angle alpha i is alpha i max alpha i max at that situation here it is very clear so here alpha i angle of incidence angle highest possible angle of incidence angle is alpha i max when it is possible when theta is equal to 
theta c if you understood this point then this is the crucial point in this particular topic if it is over then the uh, rest of the topic is almost five minutes so here this light ray making an angle of incidence equals to critical angle and it undergo refraction at least to travel the light from one end to the other end at least this light ray should satisfy the condition theta is equal to what condition theta c okay so this light ray making an angle of theta c here it is making an angle this angle is alpha i max this angle is alpha i max so this is the point when the light ray at least making theta is equal to theta c then the angle of incidence is alpha i max let us replace uh, the theta with the theta i yes where we left here we left sin alpha i so sin alpha alpha i is replaced with what alpha i max so sin alpha i max is equals to n1 by n0 n1 by n0 into cos theta theta is replaced with what theta c so theta is replaced with what theta c so in previous equation just i replaced alpha i with alpha i max theta with the theta c but in previously when we are deriving an expression for critical angle what we know sin theta c is equal to what n2 by n1 sin theta c is equal to what n2 by n1 this already we learned there you see go back yes here we derived sin theta c is equal to what n2 by n1 i am going to use same formula here sin theta c is equal to what n2 by n but sin theta c is equal to n2 by n previously we derived but how we express cos in terms of sin cos theta c is equal to square root of 1 minus sin square theta c it's a mathematical derivation it's a mathematical derivation cos theta c is equal to square root of 1 minus sin square theta c 1 minus sin square theta c this is n2 square by sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1 sin square theta c is equal to n2 square by n1 square okay so if you take lcm it becomes n1 square minus n2 square by n1 square okay uh, if you take out the square and root root and square are cancel out each other so denominator becomes n1 okay so finally we got cos theta c as square root of n1 square minus n2 square by n1 so sub substitute this cos theta c substitute this cos theta c in this expression in which expression in this expression here sin alpha i max is equal to n1 by n0 into cos theta c substitute cos theta c here so what you would get so sin alpha i max is equal to n1 by n cos theta c so cos theta c value is this one square root of n1 square minus n2 square by n1 so here n1 n1 cancels out and what left over n1 square by n2 square by n0 so this is the expression for uh, which one acceptance angle but uh, we take an rarer medium as air medium we launch it the light ray into the denser medium from what medium air medium so generally air medium refractive index equal to one so by substituting n not equal to one we have the expression sin alpha i max is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square where sin alpha i max is called as acceptance angle. this is called as what angle acceptance angle so what is the exact definition of the acceptance angle However, so the, the derivation for the acceptance angle is over. Okay, now the definition. The acceptance angle may be defined as the maximum angle that a light ray can have with the axis of fiber and propagate through the fiber. Here we see. Here, three light rays are there. Out of these three light rays, this is the highest possible incident angle so that the light ray can propagate inside the fiber. So, this uh, angle of incidence is called as acceptance angle. So acceptance angle is the angle made by the incident light ray. This is the incident light ray with what axis in such a way that the light ray can propagate through optical fiber. This angle is called as acceptance angle. 
once again you see the acceptance angle may be defined as the maximum angle that a light ray can have with the axis of fiber and propagate into the fiber right next acceptance core what is acceptance core if this is the what is this line what is this line acceptance angle this is alpha i max acceptance angle if you rotate this acceptance angle if you rotate this acceptance angle about this axis you are going to get a cone this cone is called as what cone acceptance cone what is the significance of this acceptance cone all the light rays launched within this acceptance cone can propagate from one end to the another end of the optical fiber by the total internal reflection this is the significance of acceptance cone if you launch a light ray with an angle of incidence greater than this acceptance cone or if you launch a light ray out of the cone the, the light ray is not in the cone that light ray cannot propagate from one end to the another end by the total internal reflection only the light rays can travel from one end to the another end of the optical fiber by the total internal reflection if you launch within this acceptance cone this is called as acceptance cone uh, let me show a video acceptance cone uh, right the next concept is numerical aperture the light gathering ability of the optical fiber is called as numerical aperture in definition what is light gathering ability? for example uh, you and your friend is there you are able to eat five chocolates but your friend is uh, eat, eat ability of eating is 10 chocolates so your friend uh, eating capability is more than you like that uh, optical fiber can catch the light the ability to catch the light is called as what numerical aperture in a simple language the ability of light gathering of the optical fiber is called as what numerical aperture the light gathering ability of an optical fiber how much light it captures how many chocolates you eat like that how many uh, how much light it captures that is called as numerical aperture light gathering ability light gathering ability of the optical fiber but mathematically we can define in another way mathematically sign of alpha i max sign of maximum incidence angle sign sign yes sign and sign it's a uh, ma mathematical term sign mathematic function alpha i max maximum incident angle so sign of maximum incident angle is also called as a numerical aperture so what is this sign of alpha i max acceptance angle it's nothing but so here alpha i max is nothing but what acceptance angle alpha i max maximum incident angle made by the light ray with an axis of the fiber in such a way that light ray can propagate from one end to the other end is called as what acceptance angle here alpha i max is acceptance angle sign of acceptance angle is called as numerical aperture mathematical so the numerical aperture is defined as a sign of the maximum acceptance angle so already we derived expression for sin alpha i max acceptance angle so what is the formula for acceptance angle here you derived sin alpha i max is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square where n1 is the refractive index of core and n2 is the refractive index of cladding okay here you see yes numerical aperture is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square it is looking like a square minus b square formula a plus b into a minus b okay so n1 plus at the n1 plus n2 into n1 minus n2 here i am assuming a uh, mathematical signal what is this delta here i am assuming delta as n1 minus n2 by n1 from this what i can write n1 minus n2 n1 minus n2 is equal delta into n1. so n1 minus n2 is equal delta into n1 instead of this here you see n1 minus n2 is equal to n1 into delta where from here i am assuming delta like that what is this delta fractional difference in refractive index fractional difference fractional means divided by difference means n1 minus n2 in what what is n1 n2 refractive index so that's why where delta is called as a fractional difference in refractive index 
okay so i can replace n1 minus n2 with what n1 into delta so here i am assuming if n1 is approximately equals to n2 okay refractive index of four approximately equals to n2 but not okay in reality n2 is great n1 is greater than n2 but let it so to derive the mathematics so for assume uh, we will assume one thing what is that n1 is approximately n2 now what happens n1 equal to n2 it what it becomes n1 plus n1 is equal to n so to n1 into n1 delta n1 delta n1 into n1 becomes what n1 square so to n1 square delta if you brought n1 square out of the square then it becomes n1 into root 2 delta this is the expression for numerical aperture numerical aperture having two formulas the first formula is numerical aperture is equal to square root of n1 minus n1 square minus n2 square what is the second formula numerical aperture is equal to n1 into root 2 delta this is the second formula for numerical aperture generally the numerical aperture value ranging from 0.1 to 0.5 what is the meaning of 0.1 to numerical aperture of a optical fiber is 0.1 means its light gathering ability is very very less numerical aperture of optical fiber is 0.5 means its uh, light gathering ability is very very high light gathering ability is very very high that is the meaning of numerical aperture of 0.1 to 0.5 so any optical fiber whose numerical aperture generally varies from 0.1 to 0.5 next and the important concept is types of yes i will give you a chance to ask the questions at the end of this topic so you can list out your uh, in middle if i start the uh, doubts session then uh, it, it will go in some other angle so that's why what i am saying is half of the syllabus now is completed remaining half i will complete within one hour okay you just note down your uh doubts okay then ask at the end i will give uh, i will give whatever you want the time i will give to clarify the doubts okay next the another important concepts of this lesson is types of optical fiber so we can classify the optical fiber in three ways let us what are the what is the process right types of optical fibers we can classify the optical fibers based on three ways what are the three ways we can classify the optical fibers based on material based on number of modes based on refractive index profile based on material optical fibers are classified as two types one is glass fiber and another one is plastic fiber first one so optical fibers can be classified on three bases on the basis of material on the basis of modes on the basis of refractive index profile on the basis of material optical fibers are classified as glass fiber plastic fiber sir what does it mean if the core and cladding is made up of with glass material that is called as glass fiber if the core and cladding are made up of with plastic material that is called as plastic fiber as simple as that next what is based on mode so we will elaborately see what is mode in the next next explanation just as of now uh, just uh, remember it as a mode on the basis of modes i can classify the optical fiber as a single mode fiber multi mode fiber single mode multi mode optical fiber single mode multi mode next on the basis of refractive index profile refractive index you know the refractive index of core is n1 refractive index of cladding is n2 so on the basis of that refractive index we can divide the optical fibers into two types step index optical fiber and another one is what graded index optical fiber step index another one is what graded index this is the broad classification of optical fiber here i am going to explain only on the basis of refractive index profile we will question how the question will be piled in exam this is also important question is classify the optical fibers as step index and graded index optical fiber but of course we cannot distinguish step index to graded index without the help of modes so modes single mode fiber multi mode fiber is inbuilt in step index and graded index so don't worry about this modes okay this modes single mode fiber multi mode fiber will be covered in this step index and graded index fiber only so now i am going to 
classify the optical fiber as what fiber? Step index optical fiber and graded index optical fiber based on refractive index profile. Here you see. So optical fiber based on refractive index profile, it is divided into step index and graded index. Of course, this single mode, multi mode will be covered in this single in, in this step index and the graded index. So this is the first one step index optical fiber based on the variation of the refractive index of the optical fiber it is classified into two ways step index and graded index optical fiber first we will see about the step index optical fiber so this is the structure of the step index optical fiber if you cut the optical fiber horizontally you will show three parts this is core the internal part is called as what the middle part of the optical fiber is called as what core this white part is called as cladding and this is called as primary coating this this dark line is called as primary coating and this is a buffer jacket or protective jacket okay this is the buffer jacket right if you clearly observe if you clearly observe this is the graph what is this graph along x-axis we have taken refractive index along x-axis what we have taken refractive index along y-axis what we have taken thickness along y-axis what we have taken thickness or distance distance is taken along y-axis okay if you clearly observe this dotted line this dotted line shows this line if you clearly observe this dotted lines this shows this if you clearly observe this this shows this what is this this line in, indicates that uh, it is the refractive index of the core here this line indicates that a refractive index of cladding okay similarly refractive index of a outside this is a medium refractive index of a here the refractive index of core refractive index of cladding refractive index of air varies step by step so this is one step this is the second step this is the third step okay here the refractive index of core cladding air varies step by step hence it is called as a step index optical fiber once again you see these dotted lines represent what core and this straight line represents the refractive index of core here these dotted lines represents cladding so this dot this straight line represents what the refractive index of cladding you see refractive index of core is high on the x axis this is the highest value so refractive index of core is high on the x axis this is the lowest value this is the lowest value compared to this value so the refractive index of the which one cladding is less than the core if you take a still it is lesser value okay so refractive index of core cladding air varies step by step hence it is called as what a step index optical fiber that is the definition here the, the you clearly see the definition here the refractive index of air cladding and core varies step by step and hence it is called as what step index optical fiber so based on the propagation of light step index optical fibers are once again two types so step index optical fiber even classified as two types one is smsi single mode step index i already told you without the introduction of mode we cannot explain step index and graded index so we can further classify the step index optical fiber into two types what are the two types first one is smsi single mode step index optical fiber and mmsi multi mode step index optical fiber so what is a single mode step index optical fiber what is multi mode step index optical this is step index optical fiber once again classified into two types single mode step index multi mode step index okay so first we will see what is a single mode step index smsi it is able to propagate only one mode of light that's why it is called as a single mode step index optical fiber for example uh, to understand this okay wow this is called a, first let me explain the definition i will explain elaborate later okay why it is called as single mode fiber is here the core medium able to propagate only one mode of light only one mode of light that's why it is called as single mode optical fiber then what is multi mode so this is multi mode optical fiber okay here the core is able to propagate more than one mode of light so what does it mean yeah i will explain with an example here this is smsi optical fiber 
here four is propagating only one mode of light from one end to the another end this is smsi optical fiber single mode step index optical fiber here if you clearly observe this is this mmsi multi mode step index optical fiber propagating one two three modes of lights at a time from one end to the other end so if it is able if a optical fiber is able to propagate more than one mode of light then this is called as multi mode so now let me give an example analogy to understand this sir what is mode mode is called as path or number of ways to propagate the light inside the optical fiber in a simple language you take a road from j n t u to uh, our college via nizam pet in nizam pet road so let us consider a road uh, from uh, nizam pet to g r i u t okay nizam pet to g r i u t is two buses two g r i t buses can travel side by side no because what is the reason it can create only one mode one way one way to the bus because the road width is very very narrow that the number of ways given to the bus is called as mode here in, in here in optical fiber the number of ways the number of roads created to the propagate the optical fiber inside the optical fiber the number of roads created to the light ray inside the optical fiber is called as mode very similar to that bus and road so nizam pet to grit road will allow only one bus at a time yes after first a bus after that a bus after that a bus but side by side they cannot travel okay so the same thing that road allowing only one bus at a time here this optical fiber allowing only propagation of one light ray from one end to the one another end at a time this is called as mode this is called as mode so what is mode mode is similar to road mode is similar to road in analogy so the number of ways the number of ways given by the optical fiber to travel the light inside the optical fiber is called as what mode it is the number of ways of propagation inside the optical fiber that is called as what mode right sir so the reason is why why single mode step index optical fiber uh, why the single mode step index optical fiber can propagate only one mode of light at a time and why multi mode index multi mode step index optical fiber allow more than one mode of light ray now let us take outer ring road okay uh, what is outer ring road you know everyone know what is outer ring road outer ring road uh, to to go to the airport airport road okay na outer ring road so in orr how many lines are side by side six lines that means six buses can travel side by side six grit buses can travel side by side from orr starting point to the ending point because there are six lanes six nizam pet roads are kept side by side so that road creating how many ways to the traveling of buses six ways so number of modes are there how many six so the number of modes the number of ways created by the optical fiber to propagate the light inside the multi board is six for example so it is allowing more than one bus or it is more more than allowing one mode of light ray so this is called as multi mode optical fiber now what is the reason sir simplest reason here in single mode the width of the road from nizam pet road to grit is narrow only it allows only one light ray here on the analogy on the analogy here i am explaining single mode optical fiber here the here the width of the core is very very narrow you see the diameter of the core is just 5 to 10 micrometers this diameter of the core allows only one mode of light to travel inside whereas if you take or okay outer ring road it allows six mode of uh, six buses here if you take multi mode optical fiber the width of the multi mode optical fiber or the diameter of the core is 50 to 350 it is almost 10 to 100 times greater than single mode of optical fiber here single mode dia diameter of the core of a single mode optical fiber is 5 to 10 just micrometers here 
the diameter of the core of the multimode optical fiber is 50 to 350. That's why it allowing more number of light rays at a time. That's why it allowing less number of uh, only one mode of light at a time. This is the basic reason. And uh, here you see the structure of a single mode optical fiber. The diameter of the core is 5 to 10 micrometers. The diameter of the cladding is, this is the cladding, okay. The diameter of the cladding is 125. And the diameter of the protective layer is 250 to 1000. Numerical aperture is 0.0 to 0 0.1. 0 0.1 means what? The light gathering ability of this optical fiber is very, very less. And the bandwidth is more than 50 megahertz kilohertz. Let us compare. Let us compare the structure of core with the cladding. Here the diameter of the uh, multimode step index is 50 to 350. Whereas diameter of the SMSI is single mode step index is just 5 to 10. Here the diameter of the uh, core of the MMSI is 50 to 350. So because of this it allowing more number of uh, modes of light to propagate inside. So the diameter of the cladding is 125 to 500 micrometers. The protective layer is 250 to 1100. Numerical aperture is 0.1 to 0.5. Okay, so 0.5 optic numerical aperture means the light gathering ability is very very high. It is obvious because it is allowing more than one mode of light. It is capturing more than one one mode of light. So this is the comparison of single mode optical fiber with multi mode optical fiber. So this is the propagation of the light inside the single mode optical fiber. So this is core, this is cladding, and it allows only one mode at a time from one end to the other end. So this is the propagation of light inside the core. The structure is very similar except that values, that means parameters of the values of the core cladding are high in uh, multi-mode step index optical fiber. So this is the propagation of light inside the multi-mode step index optical fiber. It allows one, two, three modes of light at a time. That means these three modes of light can travel from one end to the other end to, by the process of total internal reflection. So three light rays can travel simultaneously inside this multi-board step index optical fiber at a time. So this is multi-board step index optical fiber. This is the ray propagation inside the multi-board step index optical fiber. But there is one problem. You may think that uh, so multi-mode step index optical fiber is more advantageous than what a single mode step index optical fiber. Of course, it is how single mode have single mode fiber have its own drawbacks and its own plus points. Multi-mode step index optical fiber have its own advantages and disadvantages. First of all, what is the disadvantage of this uh, uh, multi-mode optical fiber? If you clearly observe out of the three light rays this middle one this middle one goes straight going in straight manner it will come out first so this light ray come out first then this uh, dark line will come out this this second li this light ray will come out second then this dotted line is traveling suffering more number of total internal reflections so it will come out third which means that the output is not uniform which means that uh, there is a time lag between this signal to this signal, this signal to this signal. It introduces dispersion. This is called as intermodal dispersion. This this time lag between one output to the other output is called as what intermodal dispersion. This is the problem with MMSA. This is the disadvantages of MMSA. Out of the three modes of light, this mode of light going straight, so traveling less distance, it come out first. Then this dark line will come out second. Okay, then this dotted line will come out last. There is a time gap between this one to this one, this one to this one. Yes. There is a time gap between this, this mode of light to this mode of light, this mode of light to this mode of light. For example, what is this? This problem is called as intermodal dispersion. For example, if I if I say hello, hello, you have to hear like that hello only. So what is this? It will gives the output like this. Uh, hello, like that. Okay. So uh, there is a time gap between one signal to the other signal. Okay. This is the problem with intermodal. This 
this is the problem with the uh, multi mode step index optical fiber then this is the disadvantage sir then what is the advantage what is the advantage with the single mode step index optical fiber you said that uh, uh, what is the advantage with this multi mode step index obviously it can travel it can able to propagate more than one mode so you can simultaneously propagate more than one mode of light so here you see from the diagram it is very clear that here three modes of light traveling at a time from one end to the other end so it means it, it can transfer more amount of data from one end to the other this is the advantage whereas disadvantage is what intermodal dispersion time lagging between one signal to another signal then here what is the advantage here such time lag is not there because only one mode of light you are sending the same is coming out at the same time so there is no concept of dispersion here then what is the disadvantage with smsi smsi is obviously it is known factor so only one mode of light you can pass from on end to the other end so there is no possibility there is no provision to send more amount of data to the through the single mode of uh, step index optical fiber this is the disadvantage and the advantage is may, there is no dispersion we are in a multi mode step index optical fiber advantage is you can pass more number of uh, data uh, because it allows more number of modes of light but what is the disadvantage output is what uh, intermodal dispersion time lag intermodal dispersion means a uh, time lag between one one light ray to the another light ray this is the disadvantage to avoid this first applications you see because of its high bandwidth single mode step index optical fiber used in long haul communication system smsi optical fiber for use in where single uh, long haul and long distance travel okay because of low bandwidth multi mode step index optical fiber used in short haul communication system short haul communication system means short distance uh, uh, signal propagation so uh, multi mode step index optical fiber is used to communicate very short distances whereas single mode optical fiber is used to communicate for longer distance these are the applications of course to avoid that particular confusion inside the which one uh, multi mode step index optical fiber there is a time lag at the output in the multi mode step index optical fiber to avoid that we have graded index optical fiber what is the specialty of graded index optical fiber you see the structure this is the core part here this is the core part this part is clad this is the cladding this is the cladding and this is the core you see the core part clearly core part is not a straight line you see it's not a straight line here the refractive index of the cladding what is this on the x axis refractive index is there on the y axis distance is there okay and this is the origin axis so refractive index is taken along the x axis refractive index is taken along x axis distance is taken along the y axis if you clearly observe this is cladding cladding refractive index is the refractive index of cladding is n2 and it is represented with a straight line it is represented with a straight line this is core this is core the refractive index of the core is n1 and it does not represented with a straight line you see the refractive index of a step index optical fiber the refractive index of a step index optical fiber of the core this is the core the area of the core of the step index optical fiber represented with what straight line similarly the refractive index of cladding is represented with what straight line which means that refractive index n2 is uniform throughout the cladding at every point in cladding the refractive index is n2 that is the meaning of this straight line the in every part of the core at this point this point this point this point or this point this point this point the refractive index is n1 so that is the meaning of straight line but you compare this diagram with this diagram you compare this diagram with this diagram here you see the refractive index of cladding is uniform the refractive index of cladding is uniform n2 but if you see the refractive index of core you see the refractive index of core here is non uniform 
here the refractive index of the core is the highest at the axis this is the axis central point of the optical fiber is called as what the axis this this dotted line this dotted line is axis at this axis the refractive index is high when you are going away from the axis like this radially outwards when you are going radially outwards either in upward direction or in downward direction what happens the refractive index decreases the refractive index decreases you see at this central point at this point axis the refractive index of the core is maximum as you are going away from the axis as you are going away from the axis either in upward direction or in downward direction the refractive index of the core decreases continuously and it becomes minimum children you see as height increases the refractive index value decreases this is x axis x axis value get decreases okay so x axis value becomes minimum the refractive index of core becomes minimum at this point what is this point so the refractive index of the core is maximum here at axis decreases 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 it, at this point at the core cladding boundary it becomes minimum so this is the core cladding interface here it becomes minimum here the refractive index of the optical fiber gradually decreases gradually changes that's why it is called as graded index optical fiber why it is named as graded index optical fiber in chart it is called as green or mmgi okay by default graded index optical fiber of multi mode there is no sub classification as a step index single mode step index or multi mode step index like uh, single mode graded index multi mode graded index there is no concept of single mode graded index by default graded index are multi mode graded index or in short form they are called as green fiber so in gray, why the first of all why this optical fiber is named as graded index optical fiber here the refractive index of the core here you see very clearly here you see very clearly in this diagram yes here is this is the axis of the core as you going from uh, this point to this point this is layer a this is layer b this is layer c this is layer d the refractive index is maximum here decreases 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 and here it becomes minimum so here the refractive index of the core na is greater than nb here you see here you see na is great at, at this point it is having high refractive index at this less refractive index still still less refractive index still re less refractive index here the refractive index of the core continuously changing gradually it is decreasing when you are moving away from the axis as you as in upward direction or in downward direction so na greater than nb nb greater than nc nc greater than nb so as there is a gradual change in refractive index of the core this is called as graded index optical fiber due to this what is the advantage i will explain what is the advantage so to understand this let us see the propagation of the optical fiber here the light ray will follow spiral path here the, the light ray will take a spherical path here you see very clearly yes the light ray will follow this is spiral path like this spiral path and it comes here if you pass n the number of light rays 100 number of light rays 100 number of light rays should follow this helical path helix path this is the helical path helix path should be followed by 100 light rays and these 100 light rays come out at the same time because the distance traveled by all these 100 light rays are same in this optical fiber so there is no time lag between one 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 light ray to the another light ray so there is no intermodal dispersion now let us see the working how the light ray is propagated inside this let us assume here a light ray is entered and this light ray strikes core axis okay and this light ray undergo refraction first it touches layer a this is layer a this is layer b this is layer c this is layer d the refractive index of layer a is na the refractive index of layer b is nb 
the refractive index of layer C is NC, the refractive index of layer B is ND. Here NA is, this is highest refractive index, the refractive index decreases, decreases, decreases. Okay. The light ray now refract from this point to this point. It touches layer A. This is layer A. Since NA greater than NB, the refractive, it acts as a denser medium, it acts as a rarer medium. So if the angle of incidence is less, then it undergo refraction. Here the light ray undergo refraction. Now this light ray touches layer P. This light ray P, for this light ray B, this layer acts as a denser medium, this layer acts as a rarer medium. If the angle of incidence is lesser, this light ray undergo what? If this angle of incidence is less than a critical angle, the light ray undergo what process? Total um, refraction. What is that refraction? So the light ray undergo refraction from NB to NC. Now, this light ray encounter this layer. Compared to this layer and this layer, layer B and layer C, layer C is what? Layer C is a denser medium. Layer D is what? Rarer medium. So this layer has denser medium. This layer has rarer medium. And if the angle of incidence is less than a critical angle, this undergo refraction. At this point, you see continuously the light ray subjected to refraction and continuously its angle of incidence increases. So at this layer D, if its angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, it's totally reflected back to the same medium. Once again, the same process will be continued. And at this point, angle of incidence is greater than critical angle. It go like this. In this way, the light ray passes on the, it does not touch the axis. You see, it does not touch the axis, but it, uh, it go like a spherical path. It will take what part? Helical, helix, spring shaped path, spring shape. So how spring is there like this? Spring is there. So it circulate around the axis, but it doesn't touch the axis. So uh, not only this light ray, all the light rays are, if, if you pass 100 light rays also, 100 light rays also, 100 light rays should follow the same path like this, and it should go out. So because, because of this, they travel the same distance, and they will come out at the same time. So there is no time limit. This, this is happens due to the non-uniformity of the refractive index of the core. As the refractive index of the core changing continuously, this happens, this process is happens. So that's why this is called as green fiber, green, graded index optical fiber. And the output of the graded index optical fiber is a dispersion less or intermodal dispersion is reduced. This is the uh, graded index optical fiber. Now, this is the comparison between step index and the graded index optical fiber. The difference in refractive index is obtained in single step. Here, the refractive index of the air core cladding varies step by step. That's why it is called a step index. Why it is called as graded index? The refractive index of the core gradually changes. Because of this, this is called as graded index optical fiber. The light ray propagate in the form of meridional rays. Here, the light rays propagation in the form of skew rays. What are skew rays? Here in the single mode step index optical fiber. Now I make a comparison. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This is single mode. This is the propagation of light in single mode optical fiber, multi mode optical fiber, and this is in uh, multi mode graded index optical fiber. Graded index, step index, single mode step index, multi mode step index. Here continuously light ray crossing the axis. Here light rays does not crosses the axis as the light rays are moving far away from the axis these rays are called as here is, as the light rays skew rays what they are called as is skew rays here step index in step index optical fiber you see in step index optical fiber the light rays continuously crossing the axis. So they are traveling very near up to axis. These are called as what rays? Meridional rays. They are called as what? Meridional rays. In this graded index optical fiber, the light rays does not cross in the axis. That's why they are called as skew rays. 
the part of the light propagation is zigzag manner here it is very clear this is called as zigzag path okay uh, in this graded index optical fiber the light ray go like a spring which means helical path helical or spiral manner distortion is more in single in step index optical fiber distortion is less which means dispersion values is very very less so this is the comparison between uh, single mode and multi mode step index optical fibers and step index and graded index optical fiber now the next concept is attenuation more than 75% of the syllabus is over next only two concepts is left over attenuations in optical fiber will take 10 minutes and after that application of optical fiber it will take 10 minutes so uh, i am requesting so i am requesting you to stay or 10 or 15 more minutes to complete this lesson okay so first let me explain what is attenuation in optical fiber i already told you i i already introduced you let us take a water pipe okay now pour 1 liter of water pour 1 liter of water at one end what is the your expectation 1 liter of water will come out at the other end for example if it is having some holes then what is the output less than one liter because some what some amount of water leak through the holes so you will not get the same uh, water at the output as that of input so you cannot get one liter of water at the output okay this is called as loss you lost some amount of water the same is applicable for optical fibers this is the input signal you see this is the output signal due to some things due to some things those things are called as losses okay due to some losses the output power get reduced you compare the strength of the signal height height of the signal here this is the height of the signal here this is the height of the signal here this is the height of the input this is the height of the input signal this is the height of the output signal here this is the amplitude of the input signal here this is the amplitude of the output signal so from this diagram it is very clear that when the light ray is propagated through the optical fiber the power output power got reduced when compared to input power this process is called as attenuation in optical fiber in generally the output power in optical fiber is less than what input power by some process certain amount of power will get lost inside the optical fiber the those are called as what losses and that phenomenon is called as what attenuations in optical fiber here you see usually the power of light at the output end uh, just i showed to you end of the optical fiber is less than the power launched at the input this is called as attenuation this process is called as what attenuation attenuation represented with what attenuation coefficient the ratio of input power to output power is called as attenuation general definition of attenuation is the ratio of input power to the output power is called as what attenuation and this attenuation is represented with attenuation coefficient attenuation coefficient is alpha alpha is equal to 10 it's a constant divided by length of the optical fiber into logarithm of input power by output power so the up the attenuation is expressed in terms of decibel per kilometer any type of losses attenuation slash losses the unit of losses is what decibels per kilometer this is the losses this is the brief introduction of what attenuation then how many types of attenuations are there three types one is absorption losses scattering losses bending losses there are three types of attenuations or three types of losses are there absorption losses scattering losses bending losses okay first i am going to explain absorption losses what is the absorption losses yes uh, you go to the optical fiber yes these are absorption losses this is core medium this is cladding medium here it is something yellow is placed this yellow part is absorbing light you see the power of the light is high here and after that absorption what happens the power of the light get 
decreases some part of the power got absorbed okay certain amount of light got absorbed so then what is this absorption losses sir i will explain these absorption losses are three types one is ultraviolet absorption another one is infrared absorption another one is oh minus absorption there are three types of absorption losses one is ultraviolet absorption losses infrared absorption losses ion resonance or oh minus absorption first let me explain what is oh minus absorption yes during the manufacturing of the optical fiber yes this core it's what is core core is made up of with glass cladding is also made up of with glass where it is available silica from silica silica means sand okay processed sand is called as a silica yes that has to be uh, liquefied by heating and then they drawn into wires okay those are called as core and cladding yes during that process certain water molecules are trapped if if certain water molecules if certain water molecules are trapped inside the core during the manufacturing of optical fiber those water molecules absorb certain amount of light this is called as oh minus absorption these water molecules are also called as oh minus ions these oh minus ions absorb certain amount of light absorb certain amount of light eats the water molecule eats oh minus ion eats certain amount of light so that output light will get decreases it eats a certain amount of light and the remaining light will pass over so this is oh minus absorption sir which light which it eats it eats the light it absorbs the light of 0.95 1.25 and 1.39 micrometers so here in this diagram it is very clearly shown okay so this up oh these peaks this is a small peak this is a big peak this is very big peak okay so here this this wavelength light this this wavelength of the light is absorbed very small this set this wavelength of the light absorbed little bit high the wavelength correspond to this peak this is a peak the this this which peak absorption peak okay this absorption peak gives a value of wavelength this wavelength of the light completely absorbed or maximum amount of the light got absorbed so those are which lights oh minus ions generally absorbs 0.95 very small 1.25 moderately 1.39 micrometer very strongly these if these wavelengths are passed inside the optical fiber if it contains water molecules inside the core medium then it absorbs these wavelengths so uh, the output does not have these wavelengths so these are called as oh minus absorption next what is infrared absorption if infrared like infrared photons are infrared light is passing through the optical fiber what happens you know if this if infrared light is flowing inside the uh, if infrared light is passing inside the optical fiber <clears throat> this infrared light is absorbed by atoms atoms of whom glass atoms of what glass core medium is made up of with glass right this glass is made up of with what atoms this atom itself absorbs certain certain wavelength of infrared not all infrared certain infrared wavelengths sir what it will do it will heat up what it will do heat up the atoms will get a heat up it will convert light energy <laughs> infrared light into heat energy so anyhow the atom absorbs certain amount of light so the output will get a decrease this is called as infrared absorption <laughs> this is called as infrared absorption here you see which absorption of infrared photons by atoms to heat the glass molecules is called as what infrared absorption so generally which infrared wavelengths got absorbed 3.2 micrometers 3.8 micrometers 4.4 micrometer wavelengths got absorbed by the atoms and they will heat up only those wavelengths got absorbed this is called as infrared absorption the last one is ultraviolet absorption absorption of ultraviolet light around 0.14 micrometer there is an ionization of valence electrons 
what happens when, when sometimes ultraviolet light passes through yes so previously i explained infrared absorption let us assume this is ultraviolet light this ultraviolet light is also ultraviolet light of a certain wavelength what is that wavelength i will explain you later so at ultraviolet light of certain wavelength will is absorbed by atom is absorbed by atom so what that atom will do with that ultraviolet light sir that atom absorbs that ultraviolet light and uh, atom absorbs means electrons inside the atom absorbs that light and that electron leave that atom that is called as ionization so the the light energy is utilized to ionize a atom okay this is called as ultraviolet absorption these are called as what ultraviolet absorption so this is the absorption losses first kind of losses next one is the scattering losses what is the scattering losses second type of losses in, in inside the optical fiber is scattering losses here let me explain here i will show scattering losses here you show this is scattering in so yes it is also manufacturing defect what is that core when the core is during the manufacturing of the core how it core the manufacturers silica will be heated okay that silica will be converted into solid form to liquid form that liquid uh, that liquefied silica will be drawn into narrow wires those wires are called as core so to draw narrow wires we have to apply tension at the two ends so you have to uh, uh, you have to apply some tension to get a very narrow uh, core part in this process what happens you know so these yellow regions will be formed these yellow regions these yellow regions these are called as density fluctuations variation in yes so these yellow regions will form what is this yellow regions these are called as the sub microscopic variation in density sub microscopic variation in density okay so uh, these regions acts as scattering centers which means the light hits this particular center and it go away from the core medium core to cladding it will go from core to cladding so this center will uh, scatters the light from core to cladding so the output got reduces is it clear this is the input light this is the output light you see the power of the input light is more the uh, output power is less because certain amount of light going out due to what process scattering okay this scattering is called as a rayleigh scattering this process is called as rayleigh scattering yes you clear this scattering the microscopic variation of density and inhomogeneity acts as a reflecting at respective phases like this the inhomogeneities and the uh, uneven distribution of atoms this is called as what uneven distribution of atoms due to the application of what tension so these parts acts as scattering centers light hits this center and some part of the light will be scattered outside of the core so we are we are using we are using certain amount of power so output power get decreases these losses are called as what scattering losses if the size of this uh, sub microscopic variation in density is lambda by 10 or less than lambda by 10 those scattering are called as a rayleigh scattering okay let me explain for example 1000 angstrom light is traveling Okay, thousand angstrom. So thousand by ten is what? Thousand by ten is a hundred angstroms. If this is size of the, if the size of this, uh, inhomogeneity or this is size of this obstacle is less than hundred angstroms, which means lambda by ten. So this powerfully acts as a scattering center. So powerfully it scatters the light. This is this type of scattering is called as Rayleigh scatter. this scattering is called as what scattering rayleigh scattering on this basis yes 
this rally is scattering is inversely proportional to fourth power of lambda so scattering losses are inversely proportional to fourth power of lambda as lambda value decreases the scattering losses increases this is about the scattering losses next bending losses what is bending losses you have experiment called as bending losses yes this is pore and this is cladding here if you bend the optical fiber then what happens certain amount of light what is this a wave front of a light this is a light wave front wave front of a light certain amount of wave front of a light travels inside the cladding in the region of bend if you bend the optical fiber certain amount of part of the wave front also enter into what medium cladding medium okay so cladding medium have less refractive index and core medium have more refractive index core have more refractive index cladding have less refractive index according to the rules of light the refractive less refractive index have more velocity of light more refractive index denser medium have denser medium allows velocity of light slow the velocity of light is high in rarer medium the velocity of light is less in denser medium so core is a denser medium and the cladding is a rarer medium so in this in this a single wave front in this this part of light in a, in this single wave front this part of light should be travel with the high velocity this part of light which is in denser medium core medium should be travel with the less velocity this is not possible according to the einstein's theory of relativity in a single wave front in a single wave front in a single wave front one part should not travel more velocity than the other part so the part of the light which is enter into the cladding will be lost in the form of radiation so at output only we are able to get this part this part will get lost in the form of radiation so these losses are called as bending losses why this light encroached into the cladding medium because of the bending okay yes to understand it i will give you an analogy what is the analogy okay yes if you traveling with a 2 km per hour velocity your your legs travel with 2 km per velocity 2 km per hour your head to tra also travel with 2 km per hour okay so that is the meaning if a wave front is if a wave front is traveling means all the parts of the wave front should travel with the same velocity like your body so it is not possible that your head travel with your head should travel with velocity of 5 km per hour then your legs also should travel with the 5 km per hour it is not possible to uh, go like this uh, your legs should go with the 2 km per hour and your head is going with the 5 km per hour it is not possible your legs your head your uh, hands should travel with the 2 km per hour only one part should not travel more than the other part here also one part of the wave front should not travel this is one the, the part of the light which is in cladding the part of the light which is in cladding should not travel uh, more velocity than the part of the light in the core according to einstein's theory but according to rules of light the part of the light which is in cladding should travel rarer medium so light in rarer medium travels with more velocity than the light in the denser medium according to rules of light so this 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 particular topic is contradicted by einstein's relativity according to einstein's relativity all parts of a wave front should travel with same velocity so the part of the light which is in uh, cladding is lost according to by the radiation so it will go simply also the part which enters into the core so only at the output this part is left over okay so output is not equal to input so we are getting loss this loss is called as bending loss why it is called as bending loss because of bending only because of the bending of the optical fiber only this part of the wave front encroaches into cladding medium so that's why it is called as bending losses with this attenuation losses is over okay the last topic just 10 minutes 
application only one application is there i will explain it application of optical fiber in communication system how it is used for example you uh, for example you and your this is a telephone this is a telephone okay you is there your friend is here you is here your friend is here okay so if you if you call if you dial his number on this phone and he receives the call in between you and your friend what happens let us yes <clears throat> so by lifting this uh, by lifting this part so you dial a number you are going to dial a number like 9866 something something okay and you immediately call him like that hello okay that is what signal analog signal you are your your conversation starts with what analog signal that may be a voice signal or music signal whatever it may be okay analog signal hello you are going to call hello this hello is what signal analog signal this analog signal will be converted into electrical signal by this transmitter end so the transmitter end itself this part of the telephone is converting your voice signal into what signal electrical signal this electrical signal will be transferred to transmitter circuit this circuit is called as what circuit transmitter circuit this transmitter circuit consists of two parts drive circuit and uh, light source drive circuit is yes drive circuit and light source what is the use of lights drive circuit drive circuit convert electrical signals into digital pulses this electrical signal is transferred to the drive circuit what drive circuit will do drive circuit convert this electrical signal into digital pulses digital pulses means zeros and ones okay this is this is zeros and ones will be transferred to light source what is the light source it may be a led or it may be a laser yes sir. depending upon whether the digit is given zero or one it will convert into a light pulse this light pulse is transferred to optical fiber this light pulse is focused into optical fiber so optical fiber will propagate the light or guides the light from one end to the other end by the process of total internal reflection if this angle of incidence of the light ray is greater than critical angle then the light ray undergo total internal reflection so the second end the output of the optical fiber is connected to receiver circuit this is this is receiver circuit this is the receiver circuit this receiver circuit consists of three parts one is a photo detector photo detectors already we have seen in unit 3 it may be a pin diode or it may be a apd avalanche photo diode okay what it will do it will convert light signal into electrical signal then it is a amplifier it's a transistor amplifier it will it, it will enhance the strength of the signal and this is a signal restorer it will convert electrical signal into uh, analog signal so let us see receiver optical signal is catched by this receiver circuit initially optical signal received by photo detector this photo detector will convert optical signal into electrical signal but the strength of the electrical signal is very very weak the weak signal got amplified by this amplifier okay now the amplified signal is given to the signal restorer this signal restorer will convert the electrical signal into analog signal it will convert the electrical signal into what signal electrical signal finally you speak hello your friend finally listen in analog form hello but in between you and your friend this will be happens once again in short form i am telling you this is a it, optical fiber communication system consists of three important parts transmitter optical fiber and receiver this is the receiver this is the receiver part this is the receiver part so trans transmitter consists of a drive circuit which converts electrical to digital pulses and light sources will convert uh, digital pulses into light pulses optical fiber send the signal from one end to the other end by the process of total internal reflection receiver circuit consists of three important parts photo detector what is the photo detector converts optical signal into electrical signal what is the this is amplifier what is the use of amplifier amplifier will enhance the strength of the signal then this is what signal restorer what is this of signal restorer it will convert electrical signal to analog signal so here 
last last step so here you speak the hello okay that is analog signal okay that analog signal will be converted at the transmitter end to what electrical signal this electrical signal is given to drive circuit drive circuit will convert electrical signal to digital pulses this digital pulses will be transferred to light source light source will convert the digital pulses zeros and ones into light signal that light signal focused on to optical fiber optical fiber will transmit one into the other end so that light signal is focused on what receiver circuit exclusively it is used by photo detector photo detector converts light signal into electrical signal this electrical signal will be amplified by this amplifier and the amplified signal will be given to signal restorer signal restorer will what it will do restores electrical signal to uh, analog signal so you speak hello finally you receive hello almost 99.9 .9 syllabus is over the last point is advantages of optical fiber over normal copper cable communication yes this much so advantages of optical fiber communication over uh, radio wave communication are over copper cables first advantage is light waves have high frequency the frequency of light waves is around 10 power 15 hz compared to radio frequency which is 10 power 6 hz and microwave frequency still it is also have less so uh, ordinary light waves has 10 power 15 hz frequency due to this it is capable of uh, transmitting more amount of data due to high bandwidth this 10 power 15 hz high frequency range gives high bandwidth this high bandwidth means it can carry large amount of data because of high bandwidth okay next optical communication can be made even in the absence of power to transmit the light inside the optical fiber there is no need of power just if you launch the light ray inside the optical fiber by the total internal reflection process it goes so there is no need of power see since it is a dielectric waveguide the optical signals are not affected by any electrical signal or lightning suppose if lightning happens what happens you know in generally in uh, rainy season so the power will go so the, those are copper cables but the problems are not happening inside the optical fibers because it is insulated with what uh, dielectric wave guide okay so what is it a glass medium it is made up of it what core cladding and plastic after outer jacket is plastic these are all insulators insulator does not passes the electricity so there is no such effects next it is free from electromagnetic interference you may sometimes see your conversation mix up with somebody else conversation in phone sometimes that is due to electromagnetic interference okay this is not possible if you use uh, optical fibers this type of communication suitable to any environmental condition whether it is a cold country hot country or rainy country continuously so uh, there is no issue with the usage of optical communication due to smaller diameter the width of the optical fiber is very very less lightweight and high flexibility optical fibers handle easily than copper cables so copper cables are metallic cables they have high weight okay and they have limited lifetime and mostly costly items so this is the advantage of optical fibers over copper cables easy maintenance you can easily maintain longer life economical and high quality signal transmission are the additional features of the optical fiber transmission yes if you have more interest then you can go through the remaining applications also apart from optical fiber communication i given two three applications you just go through it also Yes, now I am unmuting you all. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. 